you know, you can you can see everything. How do you uh, how do you, how do you make the 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 enemy, you know, scary? And and really, uh, the the way to do that is the enemy is scary if the enemy keeps on winning. Divine book is one thing. It, you know, it, when, when you pick up a book, it's like a willing suspension of disbelief, and you know, you're you're taken along for the ride. I think that film audiences are more likely to judge and to question and to sort of, you know, challenge in a way. So I think that that we we sort of came up with a version of this of this vine that you know is based very much in the real world. It's based in reality. There are plants, there are animals that mimic and that, that are flesh-eating and that, you know, move slowly and track and are attracted to blood and, like, all these things. If you don't believe the vines, then you don't believe the story. I mean, it's, it's absolutely paramount, paramount importance to us that people accept the fact that these vines are what they are. The, the, the vine itself is able to be picked up on their, on their clothes and on their skin and things like that. So what actually is it? So we had to sort of create this, in a way, sort of create a backstory about what what the vines, how the vines actually interact with the humans and how they get inside their bodies and how they rot their clothes away and rot the tents away and all this sort of stuff. So, I mean, all that was, we had to sort of talk through and workshop all those sorts of things that, that the vine actually does to people. We spent a lot of time figuring out, like, okay, well, how does it do this? And, you know, how do, you know, where does it get its nutrients from? I mean, all, all of these questions, you know, almost approaching it from a scientific, botanical, you know, uh, perspective. It was always really uh, a matter of creating these practical vines. A proportion of them, when we get closer to camera, are our handmade ones. So we have a workshop of about 12 people who hand make every single leaf and hand paint and hand flock and hand cast and, and assemble every single vine leaf that we see close up. Uh, my name's Gary Cameron. I'm the head vine maker, which is an unusual title. Not had that one before. We've looked at lots and lots and lots of plants in the last couple of months. Um, we've ended up very much using uh, the pumpkin vine. This is what we call the mature tendril, this section here, which has all the stems coming off it. Each stem um, will either have a leaf or a flower and a new tendril growing off it, which is very important in this production because it's, it's always growing. It ends up actually like growing onto their arms and growing into their into their cuts and their legs and growing into their mouths and into their nostrils and things like that. So the end tendrils themselves, we had to focus in on the design of those things and how they actually physically worked. The whole the whole point with this, it was not supposed to look like a mean plant. You were not worried about it. It was like a pumpkin vine. Um, and when they first are introduced to the vine. They just climb into it and tear it apart. Um, this was a very early uh, mock-up we did, which was too severe. We went a fair way down the track with this, um, and then it was decided that, no, it did look too scary, and we turned right back to the, essentially the pumpkin vine. Um, through doing lots of camera tests, we discovered that the leaf wasn't looking real because it, um, it had so much texture on it. Um, it was looking more reptilian. And this one is an earlier one. It's very rubbery, it's very heavy. And we've actually just kept developing until we got the thickness of the leaf down to was 0.2 of a millimetre. They're very, they're very light and they move, they move in the wind. And when you brush against them, they're quite natural. So if you look at a natural, a tree, all the leaves on it, um, when the sun hits it, it's actually, it actually glows from within. It's actually got a reflective nature. Um, and they're actually quite translucent. CGI does play a little bit of a role in, in these vines, you know, particularly when they're animated and they're actually doing things. We'll be adding a lot of things to, based on the way the actors uh, perform. And then you get that, you get that magic moment, you know, where just the slightest little startle or if you 
put, we're going to put somebody in a cave and they want to be hit, you know, attacked a little bit or grabbed by a vine, you know, you know, we, we'll do a little, we'll try to surprise them a little, you know, we'll poke them with a stick, so to speak, to, you know, so that they can actually uh, uh, show a tad more surprise than they normally would. Pretty much all of this violence is is stuff that comes out of people trying to help each other, you know. And it and it's and it's you know nothing is almost almost nothing is being done against someone's will, you know. I mean, there's there's this stuff that happens in the story, and it's you know it's like okay, we need you know we need to do this. Cut them off. And you know, do you want us to do this? Yes, I want you to do this. Cut them off. You know, it's sort of this, these decisions that get made that just constantly send these characters, you know, deeper and deeper in, into, you know, a bad, bad place. There was much debate whether to go uh, practical or visual effects when it came to the prosthetic work. Um, and there's a little bit of a mix of it on this, but really for the most part, um, Carter really wanted it to feel visceral and to, to feel scary and really wanted to go practical when absolutely ever possible. We have this incredible um, uh, special effects prosthetic artist that is local to Australia by the name of Jason Baird. Uh, nasty, nasty, nasty. And you can tell he just loves his job. went and got, you know, real lumps of raw meat and just, you know, watched how they moved and sagged and, and, and hit the ground. And then we've got to use, you know, we start using all the chemicals and silicons and foams that we, we have and um, mix and match and try and get them to mimic real life. The classic was Jason came to show the legs to us at set and they were in the back of his trunk. So, so he'd open up his trunk and there'd be two bloody stumps of legs in the back of his car. So I guess that's the way Jason rolls. The prosthetics are incredibly gory, um, incredibly violent, incredibly real. This isn't lit with a candle or a shadow is covering. I mean, you see every single aspect of these prosthetics, of these operations, of these, you know, everything that we do. Um, and it's in broad daylight, which almost makes it even creepier, you know? I mean, I, sh I photograph, we photographed it, and I saw some cut pieces of, of the film, and there are scenes I just can't, can't, can't watch. I mean, I cannot watch the screen. I literally have to go in there and pull vines off of these ropey, meaty, gelatinous bone material that's pumping blood that smells like you've never smelled anything before. Oh, oh God, oh God, I don't wanna, oh, it's so gross, oh God. It's like, you know, the, I mean, that's the type of thing, it's like if I had to do that CG, like I'd be like, you know, I'd really have to like dig deep somewhere to find something and, you know, I'd have to watch films of like lamb slaughter and, you know, all these weird things. But, you know, on this film, on the ruins, I just show up. Jeff, get your eyes out of here. We got some meat for the barbecue tonight. All right. <sighs> ah! <laughs> Stacy, um, the vines get inside her through her various cuts and she, um, she eventually, you know, loses her mind and has to, you know, they start cutting the bits and pieces out of her. So we had a puppet legs for her left leg, uh, which Jeff goes in and cuts out the vine out of her leg. Uh, and then he flips her over and cuts a huge piece of vine out of her back. The director really wanted us to, like, in one shot, cut and remove the, uh, the vine uh, from her leg and back. It was like, well, normally, guys, you'd have a cut in there, you'd cut the reactions and cut back, and you'd have a, one for the cut, one set up just to cut the, you know, to, to pull the vine out. And um, so they wanted it all in one hit. So we had to develop these legs and back pieces that you could literally cut, it would bleed properly, and you'd go inside and, and dig in there and remove a piece of vine out. And so we spent a couple of months testing that stuff, and it really looked good. It, it helped so much when I had like all these prosthetics when I was cutting myself and they had they had me on like tubes like three different tubes at, attached to me all day with with blood just pumping for each take and for me of course it was so wonderful to have that there to react to as I'm like digging in my thigh and like they allowed me to like they put a little hole in there so I could like really dig in there that was totally helpful. <laughs> Stacey, come on. Torch me! I shouldn't pick my nose so much. Look what happened. Dimitri's death when they blow his head off.